So I've been asked how I use my 3D printer to work with vintage sewing machine to make bits and parts and so the tool I found most effective is definitely my set of calipers. There are so many things which need very, very precise measurement and I just find calipers extremely handy. So I'm going to be working to produce um, the needle position um, sensor holder for my necky and this uh, these are not the same exact same size as the Singer ones. Very close, but not exactly the same size. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, I had to do quite a few little adjustments. So this one fits very tightly over my Singer one. And you see it's just way too tight here so I need to increase that I would say by maybe one millimeter to make it actually fit so if I use my calipers here for the inside let's see what this says okay so it's really really close really close um, this is showing is 44 and a bit, whereas this is 45 millimeters, which is why it just won't, it's just too tight. So if I make one that's 45, then it will fit. And that's all I need to do in this case, so it's quite good. So here is one that is see what size this one is. So this is exactly 45. So when I put this on, what you'll see is it, it tends to fall out. So I need to go for 44 and a half. So that's, that's a level of precision. So if I turn on my digital, it will show the difference quite clearly. So that, if I make this 44 and a half, I would imagine I can make this fit. Now one option is as well as to put a piece of fabric in or something, but I like these things to be exactly the right size. So we'll go for, since that's slightly too tight, I will go for 44 and a half rather than 45 because the plastic will stretch a bit. And that probably will make sure that it fits exactly right. So I'm going to go into Tinkercad now and just adjust what I've been working on before and we'll show you how this works. One second. Okay, so here we are in on my little laptop. Oops. And we will go into Tinkercad. And one sec. Okay, so here we are on our needle positioner clamp for the 411G. And what you can see here is I've got the two previous pieces. I don't need to adjust that one because it'll be fine. This one needs to be slightly different. So what you can see is it's 50 on the outside. And I just need to reduce that because it's the inside diameter that I care about. So we'll just copy this. It's very easy to do. Unfortunately, the camera's in between me and the laptop, so it makes it a bit awkward. But you can see it's all based on shapes and stuff, so... Now, what we want to do is just remove... 49.5... Just move half... 49.5... And that... Should make it fit. So if I put this here in the middle and I do this to what I said was 44.5, 44.5, and then I'll turn that to a different color so it's more obvious what I'm doing. 
bring this to five height. Okay. What we can do now is put it in the middle of here. And if we zoom in there, and I'll center this over the middle, this will prove that it actually is the right size. And we'll put it up to the top as well, because that's slightly better. Then we can see if, if I zoom in here, how the spaces fill out. So if I make this now invisible, we can see through, you can see that that's a, an exact tight squeeze. So I'm kind of good with that. So I think we're okay. So another way is to... Yeah, I can't really see Another way is to actually use that as the deleting space and just make sure it absolutely deletes it, so we can do that. So I know that's absolutely the right size now. Yeah, that, that was perfect. So what I do is it's super easy. I just export it, STL, go into Cura, which is what talks to the printer, open this file up, delete that one, and Oops, don't want to do that. Rename. Ah, sorry, folks. It's a little awkward here trying to press F2 through the uh, tripod. And in this case, we're on the necky, so I'll just rename that file so it's more obvious. And we'll open it up. This is as complicated as it gets. So we'll slice it, get my SD card from the printer, put it in, you see it doesn't take long at all to do this, save to the D drive, open that up, go here, delete the old one. In fact, we can leave that one and we'll just call this the needle positioner necky. And then eject. So I've done all the work before, so it's nice easy. Now I just need to print this and see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, I can it's easy as you can see it's quick. It takes about half an hour to print, so it doesn't, you know, it's not too bad. But that's basically as complicated as it gets to uh, make the needle positioner. So I shall be back with you after it finishes printing. Okay, so it took 29 minutes to print that there. Just have to let the bed cool and then I can remove it and see how it goes. So I've just peeled this off of my uh, 3D printer. And now the moment of truth. Let's see what happens, how this fits. It's a little difficult with one hand, but that fits quite tightly, so I'm guessing this should squeeze in there. It's awfully tight. This might take two hands to do. Might have to just put the camera down for a second. So I now have the cover on top of the uh, clutch. And basically, that just screws onto the end of the machine and then hook that on, and it all works up perfectly once it's all set up. So, super easy. So there it is in place, and what you'll see is it just has this, the hole I made here in the design so that it, it fastens in perfectly as normal and it can the clutch knob can be in, so you can see it just works as normal that's loose now that it spins without moving the machine or I tighten it up and now the sensor just hooks on there like that and I just have to use the hex screws are the allen keys to hook it in the right place and then we're off.